Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. It's March 11, 2015, and here's a look at our top stories. Tonight, Montel Williams says that Alex Jones inspires people to blow things up. Meanwhile, the movie Hits by David Cross features a racist protagonist who is brainwashed by Alex Jones. I heard that on Alex Jones, so it's true. And the Council on Foreign Relations wants you to support Al-Qaeda to defeat ISIS. That's right. Coming up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. And welcome back. I'm not a real big social media guy. I didn't even have a Twitter page till the end of last year. And, you know, people will say, I sent you something on Twitter or I sent you something on Facebook. I'm like, well, why don't you just call me if you know me personally? Which is to say, it's not something I use a whole lot. I send out stories I think are interesting, stories that we put out, but I don't use it for much else. With all that said, you know, I'm not into the Twitter beefs, but when somebody calls you a coke-sniffing, uh, evil person who inspires people to blow up things. That's uh, a pretty serious charge. And those charges or claims were made by one Montel Williams. And I will say, you know, I've always liked Montel. I mean, I can't say I was a regular viewer of his programming, but, you know, I'd catch the show from time to time, and I enjoyed his presentation, enjoyed his demeanor. But it happened that Joe Biggs and Mikhail Thalen were in a conversation of sorts, uh, talking about VA and the VA scandals, which uh, Mr. Williams was included in. And he said, oh, by all means, let's add the conspiracy theorists. And then went on to talk about Alex Jones lying about school shootings. So uh, Mr. Williams, I I'm not exactly sure what his beef with us is. Uh, I guess he's referencing the Sandy Hook shootings that we've had one uh, Wolfgang Halbig on to discuss. Wolfgang's also investigated uh, Columbine, I believe, for Virginia Tech as well. And I do respect Mr. Halbig's opinions. I personally think kids did die in that school that day. Mr. Halbig can speak for his own uh, views and why he has those, you know, I have definitely have questions as, you know, where's the surveillance footage? I don't have to see the footage of the kids getting shot. I would like to see the perpetrator at least into the building. And then the story, whether he went back or back and forth to his trunk to retrieve other guns. Why was there a SWAT guy from a neighboring county in the woods right outside the school? I mean, questions like that. It doesn't give a definitive answer or point a definitive finger at any one person. But, you know, they're just questions I have. And if you go to the page on Infowars.com, you can see uh, some of the tweets back and forth with Biggs and uh, Montel and some of the other guys. Paul got in and on, uh, on it as well. And uh, they said, well, Montel, if you have issues with our reporting, why don't you come on our show and debate us? And he says, I have no interest in debating evil. And he, said, I, and he I guess, compared uh, Alex to the head of Al-Qaeda uh, with those statements that he made. Which is to say, uh, I'm not... A, I really flabbergasted me. You know, I never even thought we'd be on Montel's radar, but he decided to come out and attack us. I'm not sure why, but uh, I guess he and Alex and Biggs and whoever else can fight that out. out. I was very disappointed to see Mr. Williams take that route. But he isn't the only one. Uh, it recently came to our attention, you know, beyond the, the pedophiles and rapists in the movies being named Alex Jones, now we have a new movie from David Cross called Hits, and that takes a shot at Alex as well. You! are taking marching orders from Barack Obama, that socialist <laughs> in the White House. Yes, you are. You are being bullied by him. You and all the liberal, all the liberal Jew-run media and their enablers. Dave, they are authorizing the corporate Dave, elite in this country. Dave, don't make I heard that on Alex Jones, so it's please. true. Dave. I heard it on Alex Jones, so I know it's true. And Mr. David Cross, he's another guy I was familiar with his work, but I didn't really follow him. And I was very surprised when he came out, and I actually saw an interview he did. He was speaking about the, uh, the Hits film, and he was saying to the interviewer, like, you know, I made this film to talk about social media, kind of about the, uh, the YouTube age, and how people can become famous by doing something on YouTube, but they, they may think they're doing the right thing, but they're not really. And I guess that was uh, his reference to Alex Jones, I'm assuming there, which, I mean, I guess I would come back and question Mr. Cross. What is he doing trying to make the world a better place? Is he doing anything about the, uh, the vaccinations or fluoridated water or the police state or any number of many things that we report on here at InfoWars? He makes comedies, and I'm sure, you know, comedies are great. They make people laugh and get you to think about things. But, you know, are you doing anything really besides that? And, you know, it just goes on with his narrative. You know, Alex Jones is deeply racist. We heard that after the Boston bombing, you know, they came out. Uh, what was her name? Alex Wagner. She had a panel up there, and she says, you know, he's, uh, he's deeply racist, and he, Alex Jones doesn't 
build bombs, he builds bombers. That was the meme for a while. You know, no proof, just saying because he's a very passionate guy, as we all are here at InfoWars, and we don't want, you know, a police state running around. That's some kind of uh, signal to our followers to go out and kill people. That is uh, absolutely ridiculous. We do not condone those type of actions. I definitely don't. Alex doesn't either. You know, we do believe in self-defense. If somebody kicks in your door at 3 in the morning, shoot them. If you're walking through a dark parking lot and somebody tries to shove you in a van, shoot them. You know, I have no issue with that. I'm not telling anybody to go out and kill police or military or anything of the like, but it's these people, you know, make the lie big enough and repeat it so many times that people can't help but accept it as truth. And these are the type of tactics that they use against you, the public, trying to turn you against us here in the alternative media. You guys can actually go to YouTube and see a Paul Revere entry that we had, Media Brainwash, and these are a string of reporters reading out the exact same teleprompter which shows that there is some central authority giving all these guys the same talking points, which makes me very skeptical when I see movies like this or I see MSNBC and then everywhere you go, you know, uh, it's hate speech, Bill O'Reilly, and they show some picture of Alex. There's some central authority telling these guys to put this stuff on the air. So now you know you can go research that for yourself. And one of the things that, uh, you know, guys like Montel are very uh, unhappy about is we talk about the medical tyranny. I guess he was talking about vaccines and the anti-vaxxers and all that stuff. But here's another example. Besides the kids uh, taking the shots in Syria and they died for it. And uh, what else? Uh, oh, yeah, people getting the flu from the flu shot. Also, the hepatitis A vaccine giving you a 10% chance of a fever up to 104 degrees, but never mind all that. Now we see children's Tylenol maker pleads guilty for knowingly selling a tainted product. And this is a Johnson Johnson subsidiary. And they were forced to pay out $25 million to resolve the case, according to the Associated Press. But never mind stuff like that. You know, never mind the vaccines, never mind the people uh, that go on Katie Kirk's show and they say, hey, I took the vaccines and it made me sick. My kid was bedridden for a year. Or all the many other examples, Pierce Morgan getting sick from the flu shot. All this stuff, just basic stuff. And that doesn't make you an anti-vaxxer. That makes you an informed parent, an informed individual. So next time the flu shots come up, you say, hey, you know, it says on this insert, my kid could get side effects, including but not limited to diarrhea, nausea, and vomiting. This sounds just as bad, if not as worse. Uh, not worse than the uh, flu itself, but, you know, that's things they don't really care to talk about. And something I want to talk about, the American flag. We've seen uh, all over the country, What you go out to California, they tell the kids you can't wear an American flag shirt to school in the United States of America, and now they're telling a sheriff that he cannot hang an American flag in a courthouse. I just can't believe that they don't want to display the American flag in a courthouse. I mean, that's the most asinine thing I've ever heard in my life. This American flag is what Sheriff Bill Watson is upset about. He says his agency got it as a gift from members of the Portsmouth Fire Department a few weeks ago. It's made of old fire hoses and states below it a tribute to public safety. They won't let us have our flag saluting public safety. I mean, to me, that's a slap in the face. And I haven't done much world traveling, but I just can't imagine this happening anyplace else on the globe, you go to a different country and then you cannot see the country's flag in that country. And I hope that sheriff does hang up that big American flag in his window or someplace else where it's highly visible. It's not political, it's not religious, it's the nation's flag. That'd be like me coming from Oklahoma and being offended by the Texas flag. Well, get the hell out of Texas if that's the way you look at it. And we'll move on to this. News that we've been reporting on for years, but now you can believe it because it's in the mainstream media. Feds admit stingrays can disrupt cell service of bystanders. And now that it's in uh, Wired Magazine, I believe it's also in many other publications. Now you can believe it, even though I interviewed a guy about this very same subject last year. I said, sir, what you're telling me, it sounds like a conspiracy theory. You're telling me that the feds, police officers can monitor your conversations in real time. I said, oh no, it's not a conspiracy theory. It is real. So you can see those reports on Infowars.com. And we'll end with this before we go on to more special reports. CFR, support Al-Qaeda to defeat ISIS. It reminds me of that claim Obama said last year. What do you say? Uh, we have to arm the moderate rebels to defeat the rebels, something of that like. And an article entitled, Accepting Al-Qaeda. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And this, this is real. This is a real article. The enemy of the United States is enemy. <laughs> he wrote, okay. I mean, it's <laughs> accepting Al-Qaeda. Oh, my God. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, my gosh. All right. Foreign affairs writer Barack Mendelson argues that the United States must reconsider its current policies toward the terrorist organization. The instability of the Middle East following the Arab revolutions and the meteoric rise of the Islamic State 
slash ISIS, require Washington to rethink its policy towards Al-Qaeda. Wow. So, uh, and it says, destabilizing Al-Qaeda at this time may, in fact, work against U.S. efforts to defeat ISIS. So, you know, I know it's, it's sometimes difficult even for me to track this. So let me give you an American example. Let's say um, you have uh, the Crips and the Bloods of the big gangs in your town, right? So then the sheriff's departments, i.e. the Obama administration, says, hey, the, the, the Bloods are every place. They're killing people. You know, they're selling drugs. They got the prostitution. They got it all unlocked. So we're going to go give guns to the Crips so the Crips can kill the Bloods. And then, you know, lo and behold, the, the Crips rise to power and take over. Now you have the group that you just funded and gave weapons to running the streets, and now your officers still have to contend with the Crips. You say, hey, why don't you come on by the police station this weekend and drop off all those firearms? They <laughs> say, no, we're going to keep these guns in the control. That's pretty much what's happening over there in the Middle East. We continue to fund our own opposition. You guys know this. Uh, we talk about it every single week. Um, and the people in our armed forces know this. They, you know, okay, maybe it isn't. I, I mean, I don't know. I'm not over there fighting these people. But I know that we're arming al-Qaeda that splintered off into ISIS, and now we heard the reports last week. There's even more splintering going on and more different subgroups and sects and all these other things going on. So it's the, uh, the gift that keeps on giving. You arm your opposition, then you can go fight your opposition, and then people come out and say you shouldn't fight the opposition because they're fighting opposition of that opposition. Uh, what's the title? Uh, the Enemy of the United States' is Enemy. So... Wow, I, I could not believe that it actually came out. I was talking to Mikhail earlier today, and he's like, hey, man, I got this article. I said, that's not real. And, you know, sometimes you guys at home, you wonder, like, is this stuff real? Sometimes I wonder that, too. It, uh, this just could not be real to me until I actually saw it. So, yeah, we're going to continue to arm our opposition, uh, both with al-Qaeda and ISIS. And uh, that's, that's what's going to happen here in the United States of America. And uh, we'll go out to break on this. Wow, I, I just really cannot believe that that actually happened. That, that is a real article that somebody put out. The Council on Foreign Relations. I believe the Clintons are knee-deep in that as well, or in the organization, maybe not that particular incident. So we'll go to break. We'll come back with somebody who's actually fought al-Qaeda, Joe Biggs, and I'm pretty sure he didn't really like that experience. And he'll come back and tell us about a different aspect of something very important in the news, and then we'll tell you about the CIA's cocaine blues. The knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. For a limited time, get 25% off on this introductory offer. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. Ancientdefense.com. Used since before the days of the Roman Empire to support the body's natural systems and enhance overall health. Introducing the new InfoWarsLife.com oil of oregano formulation, a highly advanced nutraceutical form of this key herb that has been traditionally used by civilizations for thousands of years to promote health. We have now procured the most high quality and potent forms of oregano oil on the market, sourced from top leading manufacturers to ensure a concentrated level of bioactive ingredients extracted directly from the wild herb and sealed in easy to use capsules you will no longer need to endure the burning of liquid oregano on the tongue wild crafted from the mediterranean oregano species that experts agree is one of the most powerful and most challenging to acquire this winter season it's more important than ever to secure this true form of oil of oregano now available in our limited first run at infowarslife.com that's infowarslife.com or call 888-253-3139 Joe Biggs here with InfoWars.com. Now, today I'm going to talk about an article that I saw on Drudge Report by the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. And his article is titled, Man Who Stabbed Pittsburgh Canine Officer Rocco Will Receive a Lengthy Time in Jail. 
Now, this guy, his name is John Rush. He killed the police officer dog and will uh, spend up to seven years in prison because of this. Now, the officer says, I lost my partner from this. I mean, he was also a family member to me. Wow, that's crazy. And uh, hands across America, man. You know, I, I don't feel good when any kind of animal is killed like that. But I don't see the outcry from you guys when you come in on our property and shoot our dogs. But we'll get to that in a little bit. Rush, a, conv a convicted sex offender, was being sought on a bench warrant for his arrest when an officer deputy spotted him in Pittsburgh on January 28, 2014. Rush fought with a deputy, tried to disarm him, and then hid in the basement of an apartment building. Pittsburgh officers responded that if he didn't come out, that they would send the dog. They sent the dog, and Rush stabbed him. This is definitely a long sentence, said a university law professor, Wes Oliver. This is a sentence that could be handed down for a third-degree murder charge. Now, following Rocco's death, there was an outpouring of support for canine officers, which led to the passage of new legislation that took effect in August. It increased the grading of killing a police animal to a second-degree felony and from a third degree and increased the penalty from up to seven years to ten years in prison. Although it didn't impact the sentence in this case, I'm hoping it will act as a deterrent. The canine officers are an integral part of law enforcement and significant investments in communities protecting their interests. Well, guess what? My dog is my family member as well. And I don't know how many times I have to come into work and I have to turn on my computer and read articles about thugs with badges who think they're above the law going in on someone's property and murdering a dog. Shooting a dog in front of a little child. For crying out loud, a police officer showed up to a person's home, tried to shoot the dog, missed, and killed the mother in front of her family. But where's the outcry for that? Where is the, uh, the parade for that? Now, this dog, Rocco, received a huge parade, brought all the canine dogs out, police officers, people in the community came out and waved American flags in support of Rocco the dog. But the tons and tons of animals across the country who get murdered by police officers because they're cowards, because they're punks, because they come in like thugs with these no-knock raids. There's no outcry about that. This is a serious, serious problem across America. And I just want to say that anyone who tries to come over and kill my dog, you've got a lot more to deal with because I will tear you up. These are family members. These are something that people love and care about. And you guys go out there and kill dogs and nothing happens. But this guy killed a police officer dog and all of a sudden everyone's broken hearted. All of a sudden people are up in arms. A police officer chokes a man to death. No one, it's like, uh, whatever, we'll, we'll let him go. Slap on the wrist. This is out of control. Police brutality is insane. And there's something we've got to do about it. This needs to stop. Continue looking for more reports at Infowars.com. I'm Joe Biggs. Another major health threat, this one in Toledo, Ohio, where everybody in the entire city has been told not to drink the water. Ohio's governor declaring a state of emergency. Did you know that the average person uses about 80 to 100 gallons of water at home every single day? If there's a water emergency, will you be prepared? Panicked residents forming long lines throughout the day. We're here at a supermarket in Toledo. You can see the shelves empty where water once was. To stay safe and healthy during a crisis, you must must have access to safe, clean water. Water which will not be available at your local grocery store. There's a mad dash on right now to stock up on supplies. The ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system is a must have for every modern, independently minded household. Protect your family's safety during an emergency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com today to purchase your ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system or call 1-88-253-3139. Introducing Secret 12, the new InfoWars Life Vitamin B12 formulation. Most forms of vitamin B12 are highly processed and synthetic and cannot be properly absorbed by the body. That's why for real results, so many are having to turn to painful B12 injections, which are known to have higher absorption rates. Now, InfoWarsLife.com is excited to announce that we can bring you our most bioactive, powerful form of B12 that has been developed with our exclusive perfected process. 
Secret 12 is a binary of nutramedical grade, bioavailable coenzyme forms of B12, methylcobalamin, the same kind used in B12 injections, and adenosyl cobalamin. Secret 12 is simply taken by mouth, right on the tongue, and then swallowed. No needles, no injections. Don't take my word for it. Try it for yourself. Discover the secret. Secret 12. Secure your revolutionary Secret 12 formula right now at InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. must wage what I have called total war against public enemy number one in the United States, the problem of dangerous drugs. Took a shot of cocaine and away I run. Uh, but William Robert Tosh Plumley is our guest. I've been called over the years to see how he's Forrest Gump. When I'm starting flying cocaine back into this country to carry on a, an operation in violation of the Bolton Amendment, um, I began to have a, a little bit of a conscience about that. The Reagan administration's determination to sell arms secretly to Iran and to help guerrillas fighting the Marxist government of Nicaragua despite congressional objections was the engine that drove the Iran-Contra policy. Secretly, Lieutenant Colonel Oliver North devised a scheme to finance the Contras by overcharging Iran for the weapons. You are. You're an anti-terrorist expert. We, Iran was officially a terrorist state. You went around I telling them that you, you I wanted those but Mr. I wanted Mr. President, Mr. the question is, out of there. and if you're not with them, cops and military, I, then you will declare that you're with the Republic now. I am a former Los Angeles police narcotics detective, and I worked South Central Los Angeles, and I will tell you, Director Deutsch, and the agency has dealt drugs throughout this country for a long time. <laughs> Mr. Webb, I was wondering if you uh, have ever gotten a chance to look into the uh, rumors and reports that uh, MENA, Arkansas, was a major drug trans uh, shipment center during the 80s. For those people who don't know, there was a major drug trafficker named Barry Seal who was based his air fleet at MENA, which is a tiny little airport up in the mountains of, of Arkansas. Russell Welch, criminal investigator for the Arkansas State Police. Did Barry Seal ever say to you, I work for the CIA? He said he was working and worked for the CIA. Unit 5 has learned in the early 1980s, even before his arrest, Seal had bought one of his planes from a CIA front, Air America. The plane was used by Seal for drug smuggling, and the CIA company was paid in the traditional drug dealer fashion of $300,000 in cash. Last night in Louisiana, Barry Seal's enemies caught up with him and killed him. Tonight, three men are in custody. NBC's Brian Ross reports that Seal was about to testify for the government once again. Well, how you think the crack rock gets into the country? We don't own any planes. We don't own no ships. But we are not the people who are flying and floating that in here. Back when this all first came out, people didn't believe the CIA was bringing drugs in. I didn't believe it. Even when Gary reported the story, and, and I was like, this guy Gary, what is he talking about? I was involved with the CIA, and no way. Um, it wasn't until uh, the CIA themselves <laughs> put out their report. I mean, that was when I really when it really hit me that, hey, Gary was right. Well, that's it for our show tonight. Be sure to go to the InfoWars shop and pick up some DNA for us. It's 30% off right now, a special we're running, so be sure to get healthier in this new year. And also stop by PrisonPlanet.tv. You can see the Alex Jones Show, the nightly news, the special reports, the rants, all right there on PrisonPlanet.tv. Well, I'm Jakari Jackson from the InfoWars Command Center, and we'll see you again tomorrow night. From the water table to our soils to the atmosphere itself, our world is becoming more and more toxic each and every day. But it's not just the air outside that's toxic. Indoor air has been shown to have two to five times higher concentrations of pollutants than even outdoor air. And most Americans spend 90% of their time inside using toxic chemicals within their homes. There are more than 42 million smokers in the United States. Well over a thousand types of mold and mildew linked to numerous conditions. And don't forget the fact that six million Americans live with pets they're allergic to as well. When I began to research these statistics, it was clear to me it was time to start cleansing my lungs in order to combat the toxic environment that we cannot escape but that we can fight back against. Made with organic and wild cultivated herbs and manufactured in the USA, the new InfoWars Life Lung Cleanse is here in a convenient spray bottle that can be brought with you throughout any toxic environment. Now available exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. 
You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. And your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.